Fresh News Smart Talk. All day. The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Network. morning and welcome back to Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, your station for fresh news, smart talk all day. It is Wednesday, the 15th of February, 2023, and this is Valentine's Day Part 2. If you got your Valentine's Day gift today, I can tell you what to do. Just pack that up and send it to the church. You don't want that if you get it today. And on that note, if you didn't send me my Valentine's Day gift yesterday, please feel free to send it to me today. I am Ting Z, and don't follow standard Valentine's Day protocol. Got a full show today. It's Wednesday. That means Mr. C.A. Nuri is joining me in studio. Morning, Mr. Nuri. Good morning, Aaron. It's a pleasure to be here. I appreciate that song. Long, long, long. I've heard it in a while. Um, If you had to go to work out west today... Mm-hmm. I hope you expected to see that long, long line, mm-hmm. right? Traffic was backed up so bad that it went past uh, the, the highway, Howard Road Highway, on to Prince Charles because people could not get access to the Bahama Boulevard uh, Highway, mm-hmm. uh, t- uh, the thoroughfare there, nor could they get access to the back road by the uh, what beach, what beach called? That's Goodman's Bay? I don't right. know. Oh, the, the only beach we allowed to go to. The only, yeah, on that area, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and all for the Caracom. And yeah. I understand. I understand. However, if the police could have told me yesterday to leave early, I wouldn't be like two, three, four hours late for work. Right? Mm-hmm. And it's, it's, it's inconvenience, but I'm saying, I'm sure in first world countries, they would have warned their citizenry. You like put up a notice. Put up a notice, say, hey, tomorrow, expect some traffic. I would encourage yeah. you to leave earlier. Right, and these are the detours. Don't let me be online. Say, what's going on mm-hmm. up there, man? Uh, is it going to clear up? And then two hours later, yeah, find out that yes, it's a detour that no one mentioned anything about. Or put a sign up for they they forgot to order the detour signs. Also, it's like anytime you know, like I think when they realized they had to talk to us, yeah, they got a little apprehensive. They don't like to talk to us, they right? Don't like to talk but to all us. they had to say is it has nothing to do with you. We have like big important people, yes, in town no in your country, yeah. And we need to uh, have certain protocols. And it's a testament about citizenry, right? Mm-hmm. The young folks is normally say the Bahamas is not a real place. It's not a real country. It's all pretend and make believe. And of course, the older folks say, why would you say that? Why would you insult the, the country like that, right? Mm-hmm. But there is seemingly no worth, right? No uh, valuation in terms of bohemian citizenry. Mm-hmm. Right? And Citizenry, per- yeah, yes, yeah. right? And this is why I assume that the Sovereign Wealth Fund, uh, or the supposed Sovereign Wealth Fund, would have given value to say, boy, being Bahamian is a great thing, and here mm-hmm. is the benefits from it, for it, right? Mm-hmm. No longer will I throw things on the, on the side of the road because it impacts the bottom line in terms of my benefit from the Sovereign Wealth Fund. Then you find that they, we no longer have a sovereign wealth fund, but an investments fund. So that walk toward citizenry and having responsibility and say and be invested has now diminished. So we're back to the to the the, the narrative. This ain't no real place. I mean, okay, I think the Bahamas is a real place. Ain't no real place. The office of the prime minister, on the other hand, I'm not quite sure if that that's a real us. place. No, no, no. That it's one is the moon and one is the sun and it's a reflection. It's it, all is one. All is one. And I'm starting to 
we come to the point where I think this is as good as it gets. We ain't, we ain't get no better than this. And we need to get used to it. So I need to stop complaining and say, man, this is it. Don't complain. Just learn to live with it and around it. I mean, because you said change your perspective. I need to change I could my, appreciate perspe- that my because perspective and saying that this is as good as it gets. By simply changing OPM from office of the prime minister to office of the plantation manager, uh-huh. I could... I get it. No, I get it. It makes sense. It, 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 I, mean, I don't know if it makes sense, but it, I don't even know if it feel better. Mm-hmm. But it sound better. It sound better. It sound better. And I, 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 want, I know we have a lot, a lot to talk about, and I will close with this, right? Yeah. I appreciate the fact that we have VIPs, very important people come to the Bahamas, government officials who need to be protected. I appreciate that there is a fear that there will be protesting and you got to make all these changes, right, to make sure that the Bahamas don't get embarrassed, mm-hmm. right? But there's still worth in being Bahamian. There's still worth and value and be, uh, having a, being a citizen of the, of the Bahamas. And because there's worth and value of being a citizen of the Bahamas, there's a duty of care of our, for our government to do. Our government has a duty of care to say, hey, we have some VIP in-house, so unfortunately we will be rerouting you, the citizenry. These are the routes that you will be going. These are the times we, uh, it can be an inconvenience, but we are prepared to help you to make it smooth. Not just saying, man, you ain't matter. You only important. The VIP is more important, because therefore... Whatever buck goes, if you don't and reach even, the work on time, the hell yeah. with you anyway. And, and even if that isn't the, the particular perspective, right? If it is really just a matter of security protocols, you cannot tell me that you have decided to not share any information with us. Who is you? <laughs> you were important, that's why. Right? You, you've decided to sh- not share any information with us. Because of your security protocol, mm-hmm. and you don't want anybody to know any details, mm-hmm. right? As opposed to having a security plan there you go. that could withstand minimal protests, right? Like having an actual plan as opposed to, and see, this is, a, this is becoming entrenched yes. in the political yes. culture. Yes. This idea that, but for the citizens... The citizens are actually the biggest obstacle in governance. Yes. And if we didn't have to consider them, then this whole job would be a lot easier. And you see that across the board. And, and, and I'll go as far as, yeah. I've come, because you know I work in tourism, I have come across tourists. When I say tourists, these are second home owners, um, millionaires, mega millionaires, say the Bahamas would be perfect save if the citizens of the Bahamas. They're the problem mm-hmm. in this country. And then you see our government echoing it. The Bahamas would be perfect, save the, the Bahamians. If we could get these Bahamians out, or either out of here or in line. I bugged the them Bahamas. tourists today. No, no, I bugged them tourists this morning. Go Thank ahead. you for reminding me. Mm-hmm. I would like to call to the Royal Bahamas police force's attention. You're going in your bag now, I see that. Yeah, keep talking. Like, you're going to back. You know, I'm going to pull this See, while well, you pull that yeah, out. Yeah, no, you no, see, no. I, I bugged two my, tourists my, today. My goal is not to bash the government, you know. Yeah. My goal here is to say that we need to do better, uh-huh. right? We need to anticipate and expect better governance. Mm-hmm. And what is happening now is not first world. And, and mind you, like I said, I appreciate the fact of what they're doing. But we, the, the government has a duty of care to citizens, to the citizenry. And if they have a duty of care to citizenry, this surprise, say, don't, don't worry, y'all come second, right? I'm, I, this is for convenience of the persons coming in. It's not good governance for us. The simple thing they should have done is we're going to have a detour. Yeah. De- we have extra police on, 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 on the streets. Uh, those who live on, on, on West Bay Street near the hotel, note that you have to drive another five miles to Tropical Garden and come back around yeah. in order to get back home. All right? Tell, tell them beforehand, and then people say, okay, I will prepare for this. I'll leave three hours earlier in order to be 15 minutes early. Like you, listen, anyway. Good morning, Bahamas. I have to take this time to read to you the latest amendments of the road traffic regulations. Uh, <laughs> road traffic amendment regulations 2019. Article 2. Insertion of new regulation 20A into sub legislation volume 3, chapter 220, page 107. 
that is specifically for the legal fraternity. The road traffic regulations are amended by the insertion immediately following Regulation 20 of the following new regulation. 20A, left turn on red light. 1. Notwithstanding Regulation 24A, where a sign permits a turn on a red signal, a driver facing a red signal, after coming to a full stop, may cautiously enter the intersection and make a left turn. A driver turning left on a red signal must give way to A, any pedestrian at or near the intersection who is crossing the road the driver is entering or the road the driver is leaving and any vehicle approaching from the lane of traffic having the right of way under a green signal to enter the road the driver is entering. Let me repeat, notwithstanding regulation 24A, you can turn left on red where a sign permits a turn on a red signal. Where a sign permits a turn on a red signal. This is the law. Dear Royal Bahamas Police Force, dear members of the public service who are privileged enough to be in control of a red plate at any time or on a daily basis, please refer to the act in the course of your duties. This morning, Mr. Nuri, I must buck up into the, some of them tourists. Obviously, they can see the plantation through the palm trees, where I cannot. They followed a taxi who decided to turn right on red on Shirley and Mackey. They just followed them blind. And when I pointed out to them, after having to stop my car to avoid an accident, that they could see the red light, you know what those tourists did, Mr. Nuri? Go ahead. What did you do? Those tourists laughed at me. And I came here this morning to tell the good nation of the Bahamas that Corinne Mitchell and Ona Bailey and Leela Green mm -hmm. and Audrey DeVoe and Cheryl Carey took the time to ensure that I have the best manners I could possibly have. But I letting you all know right now, mm -hmm. if a tourist hit my car doing foolishness, John Kerry, Usha Pitts, and Obama himself, even if he bring Michelle, could not convince me not to sue them in a court of law. You can sue anyone you want in, in, in the Bahamas court. You just didn't get no money. I don't care. Mm -hmm. I put in a lien on your life. Yeah. This is ridiculous. The, the state of affairs of traffic, the tourists would come here and, f and ignore the traffic controls and then laugh at citizens because they feel they could do whatever they want on the plantation. And it's not their fault. And, and I know we got to change topic right here, just talking about what our agenda, but it's not their fault. We have a business now that is operating on the main thoroughfare of, of Bay Street and Cable Beach, where motorized vehicles, scooters, can be rented without any helmets, without any license plates, and they get touted by, by, by the various ministries that this is a good Bahamian business. And they say, that's a traffic <laughs> fatality waiting to happen on the Bahamian streets. No helmet, no, no pads, uh, no license plate. I don't even know if they have insurance to be on the, right, on the ground. <laughs> and we have end up these tourists going in and out of traffic. We have the people in parking, uh, blocking the side. It's, you know it's against the law to park on the sidewalk, right? Absolutely. Side walk, right? Yes. They, they're permanently fixtured on the, on the bloody sidewalk and police see it. Government, they park right in front of Parliament Square. The politicians see it. Yep. <laughs> right? And no one gives a damn. Yep. Look here. You can't. This is a Mickey Mouse country. This place here real. You can't be a this young. This place you, here real. You can't be a young black boy and walk through town without feeling like you're a criminal because the people insist that you shouldn't be there. But look at the madness. Imagine how this, this place is. Area. Okay, listen, let me, let's get through the text, and then we're going to get to these callers. Uh, first text, maybe Monroe sent the police to confuse traffic flow to affect our peaceful protest today, but we will peacefully. Uh, okay. That protest done. <laughs> Y'all got to walk too far. <laughs> the poor traffic management this morning reminds me of Dr. Minnis in the COVID lockdowns. It's cultural, Aaron and Cecil. Our leaders are backwards and they don't respect us as a citizenry to keep us in 
informed. I'm telling you, I mean, I'm not telling you anything other than why do uh, government actors continue to make the most important announcements at corporate meetings and events and uh, special interest group meetings. It just doesn't make any sense. All right, Aaron, you are so correct. A security plan should be in place to withstand any attack rather than not communicate the plan at all. This is an embarrassment for citizens and tourists. Tourists and citizens alike saw the incompetence of the police force today. Shame on them. Well, I will say the decision makers, right? Police officers take orders and they're required to take orders. All right, Mr. Nuri, before the end of the show, I have a text here for you. Someone wants to get in contact with your guest, Mr. McCarthy. Another text. Great show as usual, Ms. Green. Sue them and sue them hard, but if a star like Halle Berry hits your car, don't sue her. We got, we'll pay, for, we'll, we'll take care of it. I, I mean, I appreciate what you're saying. There are uh, some events where you may be compelled to save face for the sake of the country. I can be honest, it'd have to be super, super special. We don't give the U.S. The most, one, some of the most prime land on the island without an archaeological and anthropological study. Well, I appreciate what you're saying. I really like how passionate Erin is when Bahamian traffic laws are bro being broken. I only wish she shared that same passion when Bahamian immigration laws are being broken or Bahamian <laughs> building laws are being broken or Bahamian national security laws are being broken. But I guess traffic laws are more important. Look how he's beating you, Erin. Dear, no you, know, you know he's beating me. I, I know it's okay. Dear right. Texter, let, let me tell you what my passion for Bahamian oh, immigration God. laws is. I think that I'm the only person who has repeatedly raised the question of the Rwanda UK migrant plan and whether there are attempts to implement that plan in the Caribbean region. The it's something, yes, right, it's something we can talk about today at CARICOM. I really wish that you would be as passionate as I am about critical engagement and think that one over. Texter, another text, boy CA, they come in for you, not Aaron. He's a oh handsome boy. one. Plus, my family being here from 1783. <laughs> I invested. Well, little... You know how long my family been here? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> and that's how vested he is. Yeah, okay. You see that, eh? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He know. He know. Yeah. I don't, but he know. <laughs> Great show as usual, Miss Green. NASA is not a real place. I have proof. NIB say they don't have no money, and I'm 45 and was working from I was 21 and never claim. I'm not isolated. Boy, that's another conversation we're going to have for next week. we got to do a little reading. I don't understand LaRota's math. No, I don't I know. understand LaRota's math. Aaron, Nuri, tourists look up, not down. They're used to that. Put our direction up like you is in the U.S. The traffic light is up at Mackey and Shirley intersection driver. The traffic light is up. I mean, this is a very basic thing. Them your people alone. When you, I say tourists, they, I say conquer your people. Conquer your tourists. I've seen some some tourists who look conquer your. They don't come in conquer your color. Conky Joe is a subset of organic Bahamian. Uh, conquer your can't be organic. What do you mean? No, no, no. Ask, ask, ask the people who bring the organic. The conky Joe is the only they, organic Bahamian. They don't include them inside the definition. Conky Joe is the only organic they Bahamian. They don't include conquer your people inside that definition of organic Bahamians. Not included. Who is they? The people who created the organic definition. The organic certifiers? Yes. You know you have to be an organic certifier to certify that something is organic? Yes. Like, something external from outside of you has to validate you for you to be organic. Hmm. I mean, that's the primary reason why organic don't make sense. Yeah. Listen, two phone calls, three phone calls. I see our guest has just arrived, mm -hmm. our guest co-host. Let's go to the phone line. Good morning, caller. Good morning, caller. Call it there. This is talking in a voice so long with you and uh, New uh, 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 Aaron. Good morning, sir. How are you? I'm holding. We need justice, law, and order in this country. Yes, Bremen. I, I have two questions. Yes, Bremen. Uh, first, no, uh, one comment, but uh, two questions. Yeah. The people in which uh, told New that that I'm a uh, that the people here is the problem. The Bahamian people are the problem, or the citizens are the problem. Who are they? they That's were, my first question. The government, no, but no, the, the, these were um, second home owners who live ah, on, on yeah, yeah, ocean, yeah, 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 yeah. ocean club. Okay, let me, let me major sponsor of the Bahamas, by the way. They spend money like these. These are billionaires, actually. 
Okay, let me to... say something. Let me say something. Uh, anybody think that they're more important than the Bahamian people, and they come to this country, or they came to this country, or they are in this country? Do they excrete ice cream? Okay, Brayman, you can't. Brayman, okay, Brayman. I know it's man down, Masha. Wednesday, you stunned me today. I know that you're very, very, very upset and frustrated. I could take that into account. Good morning, caller. Good morning, Eric and Yuri. Good morning. How you doing? Oh, man, it's good to be alive. God to us and Carol come nation leaders in this country. But let me get to the two quick points here, what people keep saying. The police did call a press conference. See, it was aired on the National Voice. What's the National Voice? That is, come on. <laughs> yeah, that's the National Voice. Okay. The you didn't know that, Aaron Gray? Yeah, you you I, know that, right? I didn't know anyone's listeners at this. I just, this is news to me. Uh, <laughs> I, I, did, I didn't even, I didn't even <laughs> know they paid the <laughs> ransom <laughs> for the base computers. <laughs> All the intelligent people watch this. All the intelligent people watch this. <laughs> she said, okay, she said, okay. Pumpkin eater. Yeah, they did call it. <laughs> no, man, she said, hold on, hold on. You think people's listeners at this? <laughs> oh, yeah, on the show. Okay, I can't cut him, you know. I, I don't know how to cut his mic. Producer. Don't worry, but I, I, can, I don't know why we get out to get enough. But, um, um, yeah, but he did call a press conference. Yeah. And, uh, 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 uh um, that the people know it's going to be happening in traffic and what have you. Pumpkin eater. Uh, they, they should have, the BIS, they didn't do their job in getting the um, information, information out to the to private media, media houses, right? That's the BIS, hello? Yeah, the BIS, that's their job, to get it out to all the private oh, media they, houses. They never do that. Their job to get it out to all the media, and I blame BIS. But that's confusing. Man. Blame all of them. Blame the whole, the whole structure. No, I... Well, blame the whole well, structure. I, listen, I, 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 I no, apologize. I can't the whole structure because the last director did a good job in getting information to all the, all the media. Um, but um, on, on a closer note, um, I enjoy this. I hope you could get the... Uh, I know you can't get it, but... Uh, Prime Minister Barbados on your show, um, you know. But then again, I know that's a tight... That's tight Boy, look spot. here. If I could get Mia Motley to appear on the show, you know these people, yeah. be, we'd be fighting over who will have the face interview oh, yeah. with Mia. But on close note, though, I'm glad that the exuma by, might be used as a hop for the Caribbean exuma airport. What? For all the, all the air, air, air traffic. Listen, listen, Caribbean. listen, listen, listen. I appreciate what you're saying, but uh, why would you be... See, let me tell you why I'm not excited about that. Because tourism drives everything in this nation, right? Why are you making that the hub? Shouldn't... The, sh- right, at right, some right, point, right. we have to... Right. Pardon? Right. Time, right. We need to develop that because there's a lot of reason why it should be the hub. You must have reason. And I have time to go to that. So not in Agua. Not in Agua. Uh, not Mayor Guana would, would, was supposed to have the longest runway in the country and possibly the, maybe the region, if, no. it, if not no, the hemisphere. No, no. Well, they, 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 they develop their base, they make it a base. No, man, no, man. Let me tell you why. Because Exuma needs to be a marine hub. Let Exuma be a marine hub and, and, and let Inagua or Mayor Guana be the right, yeah. air hub. Exuma already is the capital city of the, of the Bahamas. Now we have third. Say what? The capital, capital city of the what? The third capital city of the Bahamas. Boy, listen. I'm of course going back to be the fifth. Uh, uh, Freeport is going back to be the second, you know. You know, Freeport oh, is the second. Oh, how is Freeport going to be the second? How? I think he's off. I think he's how, off. How? How? It's, it's, it's not a how, but you don't got a lot of time for me. Maybe you need to be a, um, I'm your guest host for an hour, then I can tell you how. Okay. Or did the phone call guy do it? This I got you. I got you. I'm only talking to you on the phone call, you know. No, no, I appreciate that. I, mean, I appreciate I, what you said. And have a good day. Yeah, man, thank you. Mr. Right. Nuri. Hmm? Don't laugh at Zedness. I, I still laugh at Zedness being the, the, the voice of the nation. And it don't, it don't matter if Zedness is the voice of the nation. The job of disseminating information doesn't just stop at Zedness. It's like, again, if only these citizens... Would only watch ZNS so we could just easily disseminate I information know if I to get them. ZNS on my t- my cable television. I don't know if I even. So that's the it. next thing. It doesn't come on. That's I mean that's a very important point. If I didn't have to go on, uh, pumpkin eater. <laughs> you live in a different it zone. It confounded me almost as much as this statement. See, let's go to this next caller. Good morning, caller. Good morning, caller. You still there? Ah. Uh, 
Seems we lost you, caller. My apologies. Please call back. I am... I sort of like the way that you framed the conversation this morning, the sort of first point you made, Cecil, this idea that citizens always sort of put to the side or even worse, regarded as a, an irritant, an unnecessary element or an annoyance in the function of governance. And in particularly in this meeting, the 44th CARICOM Heads of Government Conference that started Today, there is an article in today's Guardian on the bottom of the fold of the front page entitled Biden's Climate Envoy. We're all in this together. So you could look for it online uh, when the online version comes out. This article focuses on John Kerry, President Joseph Biden's special envoy for climate, who had a simple message regarding the climate fight as he spoke last night about the presence of a high level U.S. delegation in Nassau for the CARICOM heads of government meeting. We're all in this together. Quote, different layers of contribution, different levels of responsibility, but every one of us has to take measure of our responsibility to live up to the hopes and aspirations of our kids and our grandkids, said Kerry at a reception hosted by U.S. Charge d'Affaires of Ushapitz prior to today's start of the regional meeting. I just want to say this. I'm going to need you to focus on what you're all responsible for, Kerry. I don't like this language, Mr. Newry. I don't like this language, Mr. Munnings. We're <laughs> all in it together now with climate change. You come into the Bahamas to a decision-making meeting, but when the Prime Minister says, and I took this quote from the opening conference for the 44th CARICOM meeting, when he talks about uh, the movement of guns, he makes a statement where the US has the right to bear arms, but that does not mean they have the right to traffic mm -hmm. in arms, right? And I thought that was a very important statement. The question was asked about the US's and other non-CARICOM member attendees at the conference. And I think the question is, what value will non-CARICOM attendees bring to the meeting? That's sort of where that quote came from. The Prime Minister Davis, responding to a question about security and guns, said, their right to bear arms does not equate, in our view, to the right to traffic in arms. Kerry, you all focus on that. The Prime Minister indicated clearly that from the Bahamas' side, in their investigation, they are able to track these guns all the way back to the store that sold them. I got a caller on the line. Good morning, caller. You're on the clock. Right? I am concerned about all of the non-CARICOM attendees and what quote-unquote value they bring to the discussion. We got a lot of calls coming in. Yeah, it seems to be something with the line. Just keep trying. We're going to keep trying to pick it up. So here are some of the guest speakers who would be at this event. Let's try it again. Good morning, caller. Okay, I guess that's that. Let's continue. Yeah, yeah. Let's just get through it. So some of the guest speakers. President of Africa Export-Import Bank. President of the Development Bank of Latin America, Director General of the World Trade Organization, the Prime Minister of Canada, the President of the Ukraine, and then we see John Kerry, U.S. Special Envoy for Climate, right? So when the Prime Minister was asked the question about what value will non-CARICOM attendees bring, he indicate, oh, what was indicated was the USA is re-engaging the Caribbean. Uh, this is something called the 2030 object Objectives, I think, that they uh, agreed upon or discussed at the Summit of the Americas, dealing specifically with energy, food security, and health care. The US and Canada are here, essentially, to discuss Haiti. The Prime Minister indicated that the Caribbean does not have the resources to help Haiti alone. There's another interesting quote from the Prime Minister that arose later in the conference in the question and answer B 
period uh, on the que a question put to the Prime Minister from a foreign journalist on whether the Bahamas government or CARICOM will be sending, or CARICOM countries will be sending, quote unquote, manpower to Haiti. And the Prime Minister responded, quote, if called to do so, close quotes. Later on, he said, quote, with the assistance and being led by one of the, uh, the powers that be, close quotes, we'll open those quotes again, none of our Caribbean countries, either individually or collectively, could <clears throat> achieve that without assistance. I, I got to interrupt you right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Forgive me. And I, I know we pressed for time today because we have so much different mm -hmm. people to get, right? Um, but I smile at, at the point that the chairman of CARICOM, the prime minister, abdicated his, his responsibility. And I explained that. He's saying that there needs to be, if anything is going to be happen with Katie, that bigger countries will have to lead the charge and not care come. That's what I interpreted. Let me mm -hmm. do that again. And if, and, and that everything will have to wait on whether United States, Canada, on any of these uh, 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 white countries decide to go in to Haiti. And if they decide not to go into Haiti, that means we, as the Caribbean, will continue to ignore it. Is that what is being said there? Well, I get the impression from reading the quote. The quote, go ahead. That the decision-making responsibility of power has already been sort of vested by the region in the global north, uh, global political community. Yes. Who's, in, who's in charge? Who's in charge. And now we have to wait until they call upon us to see if we're going to um, put in, uh, be vested in to solve and hate these issues. What I what I read from it is that uh, we're going to wait for them to make a decision, yeah. and then determine how we will be asked to help. I am not impressed with this at all. Because, and, and go ahead. Because what is noticed is they're saying basically that we don't have the resources, no other manpower to to actually go in there and actually stabilize the. So the, the I want to ask you this, Aaron. Do you think the United States, Canada, France, wherever European countries exist, know that something is happening in Haiti at this present time? Of course they do. So they, they see what is happening, right? They are able to make any decision absent or separate from, and apart from Caribbean and, 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 and the Bahamas, right? But we are saying that we are going to convince them to act, that they can't act on their own because we have that power and ability no, to convince. What the prime minister did address, and this is a quote, the international community is reluctant to intervene. Hold on, let me read. The, let me read. Uh, let's, can you substitute the, the international community to the United States just for this entertainment for me, please? Just see how it sounds, please. And then you go back to your initial. The United States is reluctant to intervene. Let that resonate and then continue. But th because let's pause. We should then interrogate the question of intervene. What does intervene mean? Because they already have a presence in the country, mm. right? So the question of what does intervene mean if they already have a presence in the country? But let me. Let me finish the quote before we go to the break. The international community is reluctant to intervene in the sense that we make it an international solution or it is an occupation by the international powers. Rather, what we seek to have done is to stabilize the country sufficiently enough to allow for free and fair elections and the path and journey to that is where the challenge falls. It goes on to say, quote, we should not be, in my view, reluctant to move to assist in a way to allow that pathway to free and fair elections because we fear it will not be sustainable. Something. It has to start somewhere. And hopefully this time, if it is Haitian-led, we believe it will sustain itself. If it appears to be imposed upon the Haitian people, it will not be sustainable in my view. And so what I'm thinking is... They know that it can't look like the global north is directing this. My real question is this, though. Do we have to have the most money or the most, most boots on the ground to be in charge of the decision-making process? Right? Like, is this another capitalist venture? Shouldn't CARICOM and the leaders of CARICOM su supporting ha Haiti be at the center of decision making. Listen, we're gonna to go to a break. If you're trying to get through to us on the phone lines, just keep calling. We don't know what's going on. Just keep calling. Stay tuned. You're on the clock and Guardian Radio AM Mashup will be right back. Non -stop.
Whether your business is in store, on the go, or both, let Fidelity work with you to maximize your customers' payment options with a fixed or mobile terminal so that you never miss a sale. It's safer than cash and more convenient so that you can take your business anywhere. For details, contact a business development officer today at 356-7764 in Nassau or 352-6676 in Freeport or visit our website at fidelitygroup.com. It's a new year, and you're super excited to start the year off right. You've made your New Year's resolutions, doing more exercising, healthier eating, saving more, making better decisions and all that. If you have information or products that encourages healthy living, promotes sound financial decisions, or even promotes a positive lifestyle, one smart decision is to advertise in the Nassau Guardian's Healthy, Wealthy, and Wise Supplement. So if you're a physician, speech, massage, or physiotherapist, own a gym, nutritional deli, or restaurant? Does your financial insurance institution or credit institution have the plan for investing wisely? Then that information should be in the Nassau Guardian's Healthy, Wealthy, and Wise Supplement. One low price gives you an ad in the supplement, plus 15 30-second commercials. Interviews, also available on Star 106 Hits, Guardian Radio, and Hot 91. Contact your account executives or the Nassau Guardian now. Start the new year right in the Nassau Guardian's Healthy, Wealthy, and Wise Supplement. The Water and Sewage Corporation advises customers in New Providence and Village Road and surrounding areas that due to ongoing pipeline tie-ins into the water main, their water supply will be interrupted from Saturday, February 11th, 2023, to Thursday, February 16, 2023, between the hours of 10 p.m. to 3 a.m. the following morning. The corporation apologizes for any inconvenience caused as they work to improve their level of service. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas. Welcome back to Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. You are on the clock. Guardian Radio AM Mashup is with us this morning. Mr. Newry, Mr. Munnings. I see you all deep, deep, deep into this news. I saw the video as well. It turns out. <laughs> Everybody lock up? Everybody's locked up. No, no, up. no, not everybody. <laughs> this is very interesting. I only saw Mr. Bain being detained. I saw a number of other people wishing to be detained with Mr. Bain. I want to say to the Bahamian people, easy star. <laughs> Calm yourself down. There are many issues on the CARICOM 44 yes. meeting agenda that the Bahamians should be eagerly awaiting engagement on. They, wanna, they should want to hear what was being discussed and what are the outcomes from this meeting. There's lots to talk about. I don't think y'all have taken the time to consider what revolution requires. Y'all be easy. Revolution requires patience and discipline and preparedness along with audacity and imagination and self-control. Miss one element, huh? Miss one element. Well. common sense. 
common sense as well, as well. So, we're talking about CARICOM heads meeting. I was focused on some of the responses from the Prime Minister in the meeting in respect to the question of the value that non-CARICOM attendees will bring to the discussion. Apparently, Zelensky, the uh, president of the Ukraine, is going to zoom in. He's going to have a tele presentation, and the prime minister suggested that he will provide an update on the conflict in Ukraine and will be present to drum up support for the matter. Again, this makes me feel very, very uncomfortable. Mr. Nuri and I have been going back and forth about what should be the priority issue for issues for CARICOM and what will be the priority issues for CARICOM. Just very briefly, I'm going to read what the Prime Minister said the focus would be at the press conference yesterday in the order given. COVID-19 and healthcare systems and emerging health issues. National security and migration with a focus on crisis in Haiti. Climate change and climate financing. The Bridgetown Initiative and its role in climate funding and food and energy security. Mr. Nuri, what do you think? It is what it is. Um, I think the agenda should have started with educating the, public, the Bahamian public. See, when we have in these international forums being hosted inside the Bahamas, the government has a duty and care to make sure that the citizenry is aware of what's happening and the reason for it. I don't believe the, that a large number of the population understand what the body of CARICOM is, what is responsible for it, for it is, the responsibilities, and, and, and the strength and the powers that they exercise. Right? Mm -hmm. they, I don't think enough people in the Bahamas is aware, uh, even that our prime minister was chairman of CARICOM, uh, nor the influence that he has. So when you come, when you bring this whole uh, organization here into the Bahamas, and and behemoths being absent of not understanding why they're here and what the mechanism of this working, we already at a loss, right? Now we speak about what should be spoken about or what should be talked about, and then you 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 understand that behemoths think that certain topics should be discussed, and I don't necessarily think that as the prime minister, as the chairman, can discuss these things. These are things are uh, decided absent from him, and and. And that's where we should have started. And, I, and I'm having issues trying to basically vocalize my frustration with it. But my point is not enough sufficient behemoths understand the, the regulations of CARICOM, the, the impact CARICOM has on the Bahamas, the impact the Bahamas has on CARICOM, and thereby the agenda that it should be spoken and what is going to be spoken about. But I still ask you, what do you think they going to prioritize and should prioritize? Climate. That's what we be talk about. That's what the prime minister is good at. You, that's what you think we need and to... That's the only thing is good, uh, the headlines can be talked about. Of course, I can mention Haiti once or twice. Uh, but it could be climate. We can talk about climate. And we can talk about climate again in every conference moving forward uh, for where the Bahamas goes to. We can talk about climate, climate, climate. That's it. That's our agenda. It's climate. So it's not... I mean, even CARICOM say climate. reform of the global financial architecture. Okay. That takes second, uh, second fiddle. Climate. Just, just talk about climate one time. Climate. What do you think they're going to talk about? Climate. What do you think the outcomes are going to be from the meeting? To talk. That's we can talk and we can talk and then we go to the next one. Uh, next Producer, one before, yeah. before the end of the show, I'm going to ask you how to, how to mute the mic. Mr. Nuri, you being uh, intentionally, I, I want to use the word, but I don't want to be rude, stubborn. It can be talk. You go, you're being intentionally stubborn. Mm -hmm. Don't worry, I'm not going to mute as my producer, even if you teach me how. Mm -hmm. Mr. Munnings, what do you think should be the priority issue at the meeting? Because Mr. Nuri is giving me the sense that he, he don't think we need to be a part of CARICOM at all. But not really. What I think what he's, you on the same run. You don't I, think I, we need I, to be I, a part of CARICOM? What, what, he's, what he's saying is basically we have already set a mandate of what we want the world to deal with. The global, the global changes happen with these um, carbons, these blue carbons, all of these things. We are saying that climate change is happening, and that is going to be the focal and the base conversation. He is the chairman, and I think, like, like um, uh, Mr. Nuri said, not a lot of Bahamians may know that our prime minister is the chairman of the CARICOM and what it really entails. And there are some, some issues or some things that cannot be talked um, from the general public. But we are saying that um, there are some things that can be changed. 
and there's some things that you you're gonna have to agitate for change to happen some changes are not going to happen because we want them to happen but it happens over a period of time so the, the the taxing situation that we're having is the migration problem right now from Haiti but this is a global pro- this is a global problem this is not just a problem for the Bahamas this is a global problem although the Bahamas may be one of the small countries and cannot bear um, our neighbors to to the south um, coming in and the large numbers that they're coming in the reality of it is that the only thing the only way that we can look at some level of change is our big brother from the north they have to say to us as hey we're going to assist in 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 that particular part we have no control over that i don't i don't even, i can be honest gentlemen i don't know how to respond appropriately to the commentary you all offering this morning because to the left and to the right of me it appears as if you all are saying listen it's it a plantation it just accept that it's a plantation and try and carve out a comfortable niche for yourself on the plantation. It is what it is, Aaron. Reality is what it is. The reality is... is so we, why go to vote? Hold no. on. So why go to vote? Why come on the radio and offer opinions? Yes. Why engage the general public at all? It's a way of release. So I don't boil up and react. So we participate inside these things to just say, ah... You could, go to the gym. you could go to the gym I to do that. Exercise. You could go to the ramp, you could go to the ramp and crack on and, and release tension. I won't go and vote. So, and that does that. So, Eric, so allow me to do that, please. In, 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 in asking you now, do you believe that even with us saying to our brothers in the North, it's not right, this is what they ought to do, does, does that mean that they're going to move because we decide that they should move. They still listening to all of our conversation on the telephone call? Or no, every uh, that's no. another question again. I, I, what, I, what I would that's s- another question again. <laughs> what they, I would, they do what, what, I, what, I, what they want to do. What I would say to my Bahamian people simply is this. If you have accepted the position of subjugation to the global north, if you have accepted a life of oppression, why is it that on this plantation you think you have the right to oppress other people and subjugate other people? How is it that you accept a life of, 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 of enslavement, subjection, or, and oppression, right? Because that's your lot and it's all you could do. But then you come onto this plantation mm-hmm. and think that you could do the same thing to other people. Aaron, you and ever it, heard this quote? Hurt people hurt people? Definitely. We hurt. So we got to hurt somebody, somebody else. else. Now you understand why we're doing it. it. So it don't make no sense complaining. We can hurt somebody. You ask the question why they can do that. I got, no, no, I asked the question why you could do it. I just no, 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 I ain't talking to you, Mr. Newer, I'm talking to Mr. Mullins. They're on their plantation. All right, let's get to some, <laughs> let's get to some texts. Dead quick, CARICOM doesn't have any power and they are all talk, talking and... They got to have power, man. Dining. Aaron, seriously, why y'all don't be quiet? Y'all up there don't stand for nothing, so why complain about Lincoln standing for something? Y'all people really clueless and some supreme boot... Liquors. That's why you lock up now. Dear <laughs> Texter. <laughs> Dear uh, Texter, good. I pray that your life is not irreparably damaged by the recklessness of the political opportunists that you follow. Ooh, we're going deep, deep Ooh. They're coming back at you. Eric. Great yeah. show as usual. They should let me entertain the people to Caricom. I would get them some boiled fish for lunch, carry them for Kong salad and fry fish, and in the night, all of us would... I can't read the last part of that. But I will say you can find an article in the Tribune entitled Upcoming CARICOM to Showcase Bahamian Culture and Discuss Regional Issues. Leslie Miller Bryce, the Bahamas High Commissioner to CARICOM, looks forward to progressive discussions on energy security, climate change, and food security in the Bahamas at the CARICOM meeting next week. Quote, next week we will have the opportunity to showcase our Bahamian talent with an evening of entertainment, music, and art. We will pause and honor and pay tribute to Dame Janet Boswick, and we will look forward to sharing with our regional brothers and sisters a taste of Bahamian culture, our heritage, and our pride. She said, to carry common to the Bahamas, may we always remember these words. We cannot be separated in interests or divided in purpose. Where there is unity, there is always victory, she said. This apparently is a mashup of a quote from Woodrow Wilson and the East Antrim Loyalist Coalition. I think it's so apropos. Gentlemen, I cannot stand on the same ground as you do in this discussion and many others obviously do. We even borrow our words from the U.S., not just policy. I will say this. I hope that the crisis in Haiti and the reform of global financial architecture 
are the two primary issues being discussed at this meeting. I hope that the regional leaders understand that they have an ethical and a moral duty to demand that Caribbean leaders and by extension Caribbean people are centered not just in the decision in the process in the decision making regardless of the amount of resources that we have available to us about the Haitian migrant crisis because it impacts Haiti and then us primarily the, the changes the changes to Haiti starts with the Haitians to start with the Haitians have to understand in their constitution they they have something in terms of their God being the devil or whatever. Ian, Uber, Uber, Ian, whatever. Ian, I'm going to cut you right now. No, no, no. Fine, I'm sure. going to cut you right fine. now. Fine, true. Hey, producer. The majority Ian, Catholics. The whole, the whole place Ian. is like 70% Catholics. Ian, Ian, Ian. No, 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 no,